Good morning. I'm here with Peter. Good we're, morning. And we're at the Eureka Centre. We're here to understand what happened on the day of the 3rd of December 1854, which was the Eureka Rebellion. And the lead up to this was this. In 1851, Governor of the Tribe Joseph, he implemented a hefty tax fee. The miners had to produce their mining. A license that they were required to have in order to attend the diggings. Well, effectively they were taxes. Anyway, and if you didn't have one, you were produced with hefty fines or imprisonment. Needless to say, they were very unpopular. So there was a revolt against the British government Many Irish, Italians, Canadians and Americans fought side by side for their liberties and their freedom from these heavy taxes. So some would say it was the birth of democracy. And it was Peter Laylor who actually, actually elected to a position. He turned up at a meeting and he walked away as head of the rebellion. And so on that fateful day, many miners lost their lives but it was the beginning of a new transition to freedom. So we're gonna go in the center and have a little look around and explore. We'll show you the original flag that was made by three women. We're also going to walk around the gardens and show you other memorial sites along the way. Stay tuned. This site in 1854 was the rebellion of the Eureka Stockade. Uh, the Eureka Stockade had long-term ramifications and probably was even the genesis of some form of Australian democracy. It was really about the miners' rights versus the colonial powers of the day uh, and, the, uh, and the force of the British applied. And that force of British applied uh, in many places around the world, whether that had been in America at the time or whether that had been in Ireland itself. So Australia, this was a litmus test for democracy. And, uh, and from here, other events unfolded throughout the world. Even Ireland got their independence some, some uh, 50 years plus later after that again too.
Well, I'm standing in front of the Eureka Memorial. So for those that don't know what the word Eureka means, it goes back to the ancient Greek times of Archimedes. Apparently, he was lying in his bath and when he got out, the water subsided. And then he realized what the displacement of water was. And he says, Eureka, I've found it. And that later went on to be the scientific basis about displacement. And uh, it's linked to the gold fields because uh, the density of gold is actually twice that of silver. Um, so it's all about Eureka, I found it, and it's about density of mass. There we go, a little bit of science for the day. Bye. We're at the monument to those who lost their lives, which a tablet actually tells us was in 1923. But the actual monument itself was raised and built erected here in 1884. Our walk around the gardens and the center of the Eureka stockade. So I hope you've enjoyed coming along with us and seeing a little bit of history and insight into our gold rush. That's all for today, folks. Bye. Bye. <laughs>We are at the old cemetery in Ballarat and we have just stopped by the memorial set erected in 1856 to commemorate those who fell at the Eureka Stockade. Most of them were from Ireland but we had also had a few from Scotland and Canada, the USA. This is actually probably the first monument that they had set up after the Eureka Stockade to commemorate those four. And lo and behold, so they also put a monument up for the Victorian police of that time who fought in the battle at the Eureka Rebellion.